This is the video I wish I had in 2018 and 2019 when I was facing job loss, being unsuccessful with my job search and feeling incredibly left behind in my life and in my career. If you've experienced any of those things and are trying to figure your way out of them, then this video is for you. So for the sake of the people that may be completely new to me, I'm Gertrude Nontra. I finished my PhD in microbiology and immunology in 2015. And I was so, so blessed to have immediately gotten a postdoc after that. And so I went straight into a postdoc. But just, just when I was about to hit that three year mark of being in a postdoc, which for if you're new, a postdoc simply is extra training that you often do after your PhD in order to become a research professor typically, right? And so I went into a postdoc um, and just before the three year mark, our principal investigator, the PI called everybody into a conference room and let us know that we were all going to be losing our jobs. At this time it was February of 2018. So we're all going to be losing our jobs at the end of May of 2018. So, you know, before that, I've always been interested in side businesses, side hustles. And so I had actually started freelance writing on the side. It wasn't anything super, super wild, but it was bringing enough extra money to cover some of the bills for our household. And so when this postdoc ended, I was like, okay, well, I'm not completely without money. I can quickly um, try to find a little a few more clients and see how this freelance writing business goes. So I continued to freelance write at the time I had a four or five year old child. And so it also gave me an opportunity to be a stay at home mom and be around for him. And you know something, now that I look back, right I maybe wouldn't change that experience that experience of being a stay-at-home mom of being with my son and raising him because now I don't have that opportunity and those are really precious times I got to spend with him so even though it was a difficult time that part of the experience actually I kind of miss it sometimes because I'm like wow like being able to stay home and raise your child it's not everybody that gets to do that and so that portion of it was was really a blessing and a joy anyway all through this time while I was freelance writing being a stay-at-home mom I was still looking for full-time work because while some people are definitely built for the entrepreneurial life that's not me <laughs> okay so I kept on looking for full-time opportunities six months after losing the postdoc I did get an opportunity unfortunately it, it took a few weeks and the company decided that I wasn't a great fit and so that job ended and that was really crushing for me because I had been grinding and looking for jobs for six months and finally gotten one only to like have the job end once again so yet again I was faced with job loss and you know I felt let me let me just talk about how I felt during that time I felt like a complete failure I felt like you know how come you have all this education I have two bachelor's degrees I have a PhD how come you cannot you don't have a job you know, I know that some of these things, sometimes when you're going through them, that the thoughts are not necessarily rational at the time, but this is the thought process I had at the time that, wow, you have a PhD and you can't manage to keep a job. I felt like a complete failure. And that thought assailed my mind every single day for several months. Now, during this time, I'm so happy that I do have a great support system in the form of my husband. Um, I had counselors who were able to talk to me and kind of talk me. They didn't necessarily talk me out of my emotions, but it was very healing to, to be, to be listened to, to be heard, to, you know, express how I was feeling because I was feeling like a complete failure. I'm not going to lie. I was feeling like my, my life is like, how do you get a job and lose it? you know, your postdoc didn't work out. This is another job didn't work out. How can you be such a failure? All these self punishing thoughts. So it felt good to be listened to. And for, for me to get inputs from some of those people, it really helped to put things in perspective for me. It was really hard at the time for me to see what they were saying. For instance, one person who I really respect and who is such a great, um, you know, advisor in my life, 
um he said he said something he said he told me something he said gertrude you know i know that this is very devastating that you've lost this job that you were looking for a job and then you got it and then you lost it but i want you to realize that you're going to overcome this and i'm, I'm kind of getting emotional as i'm saying this but i want you to realize that you're going to overcome this because if you don't remember that even in this time right if you don't remember that you can overcome this and that you can get over this you can easily easily and maybe this is for somebody too you can easily allow that event to be the one defining moment of your life which never allows you to become successful it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where every you know you always be thinking everything i do i do doesn't work out how come i have all this education and really this is how i was thinking again none of them were rational thoughts but they were really going through my head and i remember that part of the conversation he talked to me for like a, a really long time that day but i remember that part of the conversation so well when he said don't allow this event don't allow this job loss to be the one defining thing of your life that makes you think that you can't rise above that makes you think you're a complete failure that makes you think that you you can never win right he told me that and i took that and put it in my pocket and even though i still struggled with all those feelings it was one of my guiding lights that really got me out of that low place so by this point it's 2019 i'm still applying for jobs i'm looking at both academic jobs and jobs outside of academia and nothing is working <laughs> i applied for several academic jobs and i always would get back the same email thank you very much for your application but upon review we think that your you know we found somebody else that's qualified or some other excuse that they give and so what i decided to do was begin to look more you know be more focused on looking for jobs outside of academia um, and at a point, I'll be honest with you, after I did that for a little bit, again, unsuccessful, one of the things that I ended up, ended up happening was I was like, oh, just forget this process. I, I was still freelance writing. I'm like, I'm going to just figure out this freelance writing thing, how to grow it. And maybe, th maybe that's what I can do, right. Um, to contribute financially to my household. And so I kept on going. And I remember one day my husband came to me and he was like, Hey honey, I realized that you stopped applying for jobs. I'm like, yeah, because nobody's paying attention to me and I give up. <laughs> um, but then he was like, but you can try again, you know, just try again. Don't, don't just give up. I know that, you know, you have these dreams and you know, you had these plans and it hasn't worked out the way that you're hoping, but just try again so kind of like in a way to say okay fine i applied for jobs i went online i went i think i went on higheredjobs.com that was a website i used to visit a lot during that time when i was applying for academic jobs and i found one where it was an adjunct professor pool for a community college uh those are two-year colleges here in the u.s um around me and so i just I just uploaded my resume. I didn't think much of it. I uploaded my resume. I'm like, whatever. Like I've been do always doing this and nobody pays attention to me. So I, I just uploaded it. And, um, a few months later, I did get a call from the head of department, the head of biology of the biology department at that community college. And she was like, Hey, Dr. Nantra, are you still looking for an adjunct professor position? At this point, I had still been unsuccessful at getting anything. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And I think this was in October of 2019, I believe. Yes. October of 2019. So we've gone through the whole of 2019 without anything, just freelance writing and stay now, stay at home mom in. But yes, we had that conversation. I interviewed. I got the job and so come 2020 January 2020 I actually started teaching during the spring semester and we all know what happened in 2020 I taught for maybe six or seven weeks and then we had to shut down and go remote um, but you know getting that adjunct professor position actually reignited my enthusiasm once more I believed once more that I could get jobs right um, that was that was the flicker of hope for me um, and for a while i thought that i would just be adjunct teaching and maybe and i was combining that with my freelance writing so between freelance writing and adjunct teaching i would make enough income for us to you know for me to contribute to my household for us to pay the bills buy food all that good jazz right so i've talked about how having a support system was great and i highly recommend it if you're going through this 
type of experience to have a support system but one thing that i started doing inadvertently when you know things didn't seem to be working out for me was i began to build what i now know as a personal brand i began to cultivate or curate that on linkedin and at the time because i was freelance writing what i was doing was i was just sharing the tools i was using in my freelance writing business and i think i was doing that really to attract people who could be potential freelance writing clients because i had read on some blog somewhere that using linkedin could attract clients and because i had a youtube video at the time that was still fledgling there was a conference near me i went there and they were talking about linkedin so i was like okay let me try this linkedin so i started just building an online presence on linkedin sharing my work sharing the work i had done for my clients and i did actually begin to attract the attention of the people in my target market which was um health based businesses so there was i was writing for a health technology company there was another health technology company that got in touch with me and we started a relationship and i started um i started writing for them but it didn't go very far but yes it actually was effective you know people began to contact me through there for freelance writing services so that was my first taste of building that personal brand now when i got the adjunct professor position I began to talk about some of those experiences as well. And of course, as I did that, people began to connect with me. Now, at the end of 2020, uh, is when the story really shifts in a big way because at this point, I am an adjunct professor. I'm coasting along freelance writing and adjunct professoring, uh, if that's a word. And then um, on LinkedIn, somebody I was connected with just posted a position for a science writer, a full-time science writer with a marketing agency. Now, at this time, I had been freelance writing for since 2018. So I was like, why not? And the job description looked like everything I was already doing in my freelance writing business. So it's like, okay, let me apply for it. Now, this is also where at this point I had learned the lesson that for a lot of non-academic jobs, applying with your academic CV is one of the ways to get absolutely ignored by the company. <laughs> so I had rewritten my resume. I had this one page resume that just highlighted my writing skills. And that's the resume I uploaded to that job. Um, the very next day, I got a message from the post of that job, Juliet, who would also become my manager at CG Life. And long story short, I got that full-time job. So now I had the full-time science writer job. I was adjunct teaching. They overlapped for a little while. And then I realized, man, <laughs> it was getting to be a lot, even though I loved adjunct teaching so, so much. I loved my students. I loved teaching biology. I love it when the light bulbs go off in people's eyes. I had to quit adjunct teaching. And focus on scientific writing and i continued with that from the beginning of 2021 until today and all this while i was building my personal brand i was sharing little bits of my journey going from academia to uh, a science writer role sharing what i was learning in science writing all of that and then it continued to grow and then the the really really interesting part of this was in 2021 right around the time i got the job with cg life um as a science writer somebody from temple university reached out to me and was like hey I would love to invite you to speak to my students about building a personal brand. And I was like, wow, okay, that sounds fantastic. And then there was a podcast that invited me to come talk about personal branding. And that was personal finance for PhDs. I don't know if she invited me or I pitched it. I don't know which what, where, how it went. But then I realized that because I'd been building a personal brand across this time and I had seen results, right? The results of building a personal brand because actually when I got that science writer role, um, the team told me that they were really impressed with what I was doing online. So it was working and it, it really did help with my application um, which is, which is incredible. Uh, and, and if you want a video to watch on building a personal brand, how I built my personal brand, 
I recommend this video. I'll put it in the card somewhere up here so you can watch it after this one. But yes, I began to get invited to speak about personal branding. And then because I had now moved from having an, an academic role, right, to a non-academic role, people wanted to hear about that as well. And then people wanted to hear about my work as a scientific writer, right? Because it's a profession that is not a really traditional profession in that sense. And a lot of people are always intrigued by it. And and so I began to get invited to speak at universities that I don't think I would have ever gotten the chance to speak at if I was maybe some professor somewhere. They'd be like, who is this professor who wants to speak at a university? But because I'd built that brand, I'd built that personal brand, I got invited to speak at Johns Hopkins. I got invited to speak at Oxford University. I've been invited to speak at UC Irvine twice. Um, and some other phenomenal institutions as well as professional groups. And you know, now that it's 2023, it's the end of 2023, I'm looking back and I'm just saying, wow, it's been five years since, a little over five years since I lost that job and basically reinvented my life. It started really low, but once I had those support systems, once I decided, okay, I'm feeling really low, but I'm, I'm just gonna try doing something like freelance, right? To go building a personal brand, right? It really has changed the course of how I thought my life was going to go when I finished my PhD. So maybe you've watched this video until this point and I say thank you for sticking with me. The encouragement I have for you, if you're going through job loss, you're going through feeling like you're behind in life, you're behind in your career, you're trying to find a new job and it's not working. I want to tell you that I've experienced all those things. I've come out at the end of it and it is possible for you to come out at the end of it too. It's possible for you to reinvent your life. It's possible. So don't lose hope, right? There is you know, I know when you're in that place, you're in that dark spot, it doesn't feel like it. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but maybe five years from now, you too will write a blog post or make a video or something or whatever the social media is at that time. And you will say, I watched Gertrude Nantra's video and this is what she said and it changed my life. I hope it does change your life. <laughs>